Chapter 1. The Birth of a Deliverer In the ancient days of Israel, when the Israelites once again did evil in the sight of the Lord, they fell into the hands of the Philistines, who oppressed them for forty long years. It was during this time that a man named Manoah, from the tribe of Dan, lived in the town of Zorah. Manoah's wife was barren and had borne no children. One day, the angel of the Lord appeared to her and announced a miraculous event. Behold, said the angel, you are barren and have not borne children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Therefore be careful and drink no wine or strong drink, and eat nothing unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. No razor shall come upon his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb. He shall begin to save Israel from the hand of the Philistines. The woman, filled with awe and joy, ran to her husband and recounted the divine encounter. Manoah prayed to the Lord, asking for further guidance on how to raise the child who was to be born. God listened to Manoah's plea, and the angel of the Lord appeared again to his wife. This time, Manoah was present. They offered a sacrifice to the Lord, and as the flames ascended from the altar, the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame. Manoah and his wife fell to the ground, realizing they had seen a divine being. True to the angel's prophecy, Manoah's wife conceived and bore a son. They named him Samson, and the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. The Spirit of the Lord began to stir him while he was in Mahanadan, between Zorah and Eshtael. Chapter 2. Samson's Marriage and First Exploits As Samson grew, he became renowned for his extraordinary strength, a gift from God to begin delivering Israel from the Philistines. One day, Samson went down to Timnah and saw a Philistine woman there. He returned to his parents and expressed his desire to marry her. His parents were distressed, asking why he would choose a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines instead of from his own people. But Samson insisted, Get her for me, for she is right in my eyes. Unbeknownst to his parents, this was from the Lord, for he was seeking an occasion against the Philistines. As Samson went down to Timnah with his parents to arrange the marriage, a young lion came roaring towards him. The Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and with his bare hands, he tore the lion apart as one would tear a young goat. But he did not tell his parents what he had done. Later, when he returned to marry the woman, he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion and found a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass. He took some of the honey and gave some to his parents, but he did not reveal its source. At his wedding feast, Samson proposed a riddle to his thirty companions, promising thirty linen garments and thirty sets of clothes if they could solve it within seven days. The riddle was, out of the eater came something to eat, out of the strong came something sweet. Unable to solve it, the companions coerced Samson's bride to extract the answer from him. On the seventh day, she wept before him, and he finally revealed the secret to her. She immediately passed it on to the companions. Before sunset on the seventh day, the men of the city said to Samson, What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? Samson, realizing they had used his wife to obtain the answer, said, If you had not plowed with my heifer, you would not have solved my riddle. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily, and he went down to Ashkelon, killed thirty of their men, took their garments, and gave them to those who had explained the riddle. Burning with anger, he returned to his father's house, and his wife was given to his companion, who had attended him at the feast. Chapter 3. Samson's Revenge on the Philistines After some time, during the wheat harvest, Samson visited his wife with a young goat, intending to go to her room. However, her father would not let him enter, saying, I was sure you hated her, so I gave her to your companion. Is not her younger sister more attractive? Take her instead. Furious, Samson declared, This time I shall be innocent in regard to the Philistines when I do them harm. He caught three hundred foxes, tied them tail to tail in pairs, and fastened a torch to each pair of tails. He lit the torches and let the foxes loose in the standing grain of the Philistines, burning both the shocks and the standing grain, as well as the vineyards and olive groves. When the Philistines learned that Samson had done this because his wife had been given to his companion, they came up and burned her and her father with fire. Enraged, Samson said to them, If this is what you do, I swear I will be avenged on you. 
and after that I will quit. He struck them hip and thigh with a great blow, and then he went down and stayed in the cleft of the rock of Etam. The Philistines went up and encamped in Judah, spreading out near Lehi. The men of Judah asked, Why have you come up against us? The Philistines replied, We have come to bind Samson, to do to him as he did to us. Three thousand men of Judah went to the cleft of the rock of Etam and said to Samson, Do you not realize that the Philistines are rulers over us? What have you done to us? Samson replied, As they did to me, so I have done to them. They said to him, We have come to bind you, that we may give you into the hands of the Philistines. Samson agreed, but made them swear not to kill him themselves. They bound him with two new ropes and brought him up from the rock. As he approached Lehi, the Philistines came shouting to meet him. The Spirit of the Lord rushed upon him. The ropes on his arms became like flax that has caught fire, and his bonds melted off his hands. He found a fresh jawbone of a donkey, reached out his hand, and took it. With it, he struck down a thousand men. Then Samson said, With the jawbone of a donkey, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of a donkey have I struck down a thousand men. When he finished speaking, he threw away the jawbone, and that place was called Ramoth Lehi. Samson was very thirsty, and he called on the Lord, saying, You have granted this great salvation by the hand of your servant, and shall I now die of thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? God split open the hollow place that is at Lehi, and water came out from it. When Samson drank, his spirit returned, and he revived. Therefore, the name of it was called in Hakor, which is at Lehi to this day. Chapter 4. Samson and Delilah. After this, Samson judged Israel for twenty years in the days of the Philistines. He went to Gaza and saw a prostitute there, and he went into her. The Gazettes were told, Samson has come here. And they surrounded the place and set an ambush for him all night at the gate of the city. They kept quiet all night, saying, let us wait till the light of the morning, then we will kill him. But Samson lay till midnight, and at midnight he arose and took hold of the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts, and pulled them up, bar and all. He put them on his shoulders, and carried them to the top of the hill that is in front of Hebron. Afterward, he loved a woman in the valley of Sarek, whose name was Delilah. The lords of the Philistines came up to her and said, Seduce him, and see where his great strength lies and by what means we may overpower him, that we may bind him to humble him. And we will each give you eleven hundred pieces of silver. Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me where your great strength lies, and how you might be bound, that one could subdue you. Samson said to her, If they bind me with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been dried, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. The lords of the Philistines brought her seven fresh bowstrings that had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now she had men lying in ambush in an inner chamber. She said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he snapped the bowstrings, as a thread of flax snaps when it touches the fire. So the secret of his strength was not known. Delilah said to Samson, Behold, you have mocked me and told me lies. Please tell me how you might be bound. He said to her, If they bind me with new ropes that have not been used, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and bound him with them and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And the men lying in ambush were in an inner chamber. But he snapped the ropes off his arms like a thread. Delilah said to Samson, Until now you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me how you might be bound. And he said to her, if you weave the seven locks of my head with the web and fasten it tight with the pin, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. So while he slept, Delilah took the seven locks of his head and wove them into the web, and she made them tight with the pin and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he awoke from his sleep and pulled away the pin, the loom, and the web. And she said to him, How can you say, I love you? When your heart is not with me, you have mocked me these three times, and you have not told me where your great strength lies. And when she pressed him hard with her words day after day, and urged him, his soul was vexed to death. And he told her all his heart, and said to her, A razor has never come upon my head.
for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If my head is shaved, then my strength will leave me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up again, for he has told me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in their hands. She made him sleep on her knees. And she called a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him, and his strength left him. And she said, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. And the Philistines seized him and gouged out his eyes, and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with bronze shackles. And he ground at the mill in the prison. But the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. Chapter 5. Samson's Final Act Now the lords of the Philistines gathered to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon their god and to rejoice. And they said, Our god has given Samson our enemy into our hand. And when the people saw him, they praised their god. For they said, Our god has given our enemy into our hand, the ravager of our country, who has killed many of us. And when their hearts were merry, they said, Call Samson, that he may entertain us. So they called Samson out of the prison, and he entertained them. They made him stand between the pillars. And Samson said to the young man who held him by the hand, Let me feel the pillars on which the house rests, that I may lean against them. Now the house was full of men and women. All the lords of the Philistines were there. And on the roof there were about three thousand men and women, who looked on while Samson entertained. Then Samson called to the Lord and said, O Lord God, please remember me and please strengthen me only this once, O God, that I may be avenged on the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson grasped the two middle pillars on which the house rested, and he leaned his weight against them, his right hand on the one and his left hand on the other. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. Then he bowed with all his strength, and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people who were in it. So the dead whom he killed at his death were more than those whom he had killed during his life. Then his brothers and all his family came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Eshtael in the tomb of Manoah his father. He had judged Israel twenty years.